Good afternoon, everyone. I am Lisa Lord, Prime Minister, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, and the Minister of Health and Wellness, Lieutenant Colonel the Honorable Jeffrey Bostick, will address the nation. Minister Bostick will provide a COVID-19 update at this time. Good afternoon, uh, Lisa. Good afternoon, all. I'm happy to give this update on the current situation here in Barbados. And I report at this time that the COVID-19 trajectory continues to show a steady increase in newly confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infections. This is a, as a result of the ongoing community transmission which we are experiencing at this time. And of course, the circulation of the highly transmissible variant, the Delta variant. Some key updates uh, in relation to today's stats, test results, the Best Dos Santos Public Health Laboratory would have conducted 1,387 tests, which have yielded 78 new positive cases, 78 new positive cases. Of note with those cases, and we have 17 under 18 positive cases from this um, th th these results. And this really is a significant development. We continue to see the trend where a number of persons under the age of 18 are testing positive for COVID. You would recall that some time ago we would have established a threshold of 25 cases per 100,000 of population, the cumulative incidence, and uh, this was high back in January, February, and we were able to bring it below the 25 per 100,000. Um, regrettably, with the cases that we've been experiencing over the last several days, and, in some, and I would say even a few weeks, we have reached over the past 28 days, 368 per 100,000, and over the last 14 days, 287 per 100,000. And although this may appear, well, numerically, there's some improvement here. This is way, far, way, way out of where we want it to be, the range. And so there's still, still a lot of work to be done. We have a total up to this morning uh, at about 8.30, 9 o'clock. There were about 697 persons in the isolation facilities across the country. Um, that number obviously will change and people must, we must get accustomed to the changes in the numbers because persons are discharged throughout the day and also persons are admitted to isolation as a result of a particular day's results. So this is where we are at this point in time. Um, we are managing the situation with the resources that we have. We are very cognizant of the fact that it is not only COVID that we have to deal with, but the entire healthcare system. And this is something that we have been watching with a very careful eye over the last several days. We are still in a position to deliver a standard of healthcare that we can all be proud of as Barbadians. But when you experience delays in the delivery of the healthcare that you expect, it is because we are trying to move a number of parts, so to speak, when we have cases coming in and we have to deploy personnel to the various facilities. So at this point in time, we are in a position where there must be concern expressed by all, and also there must be a desire on the part of each and every one of us as citizens and residents of this country to contribute towards the countries getting out of the situation that we are in at the moment. As I said before, we are still able to manage this process. I congratulate all those persons who are doing the contact tracing because, as you can imagine, this will become increasingly difficult as these numbers increase or as if we have to sustain the current um, number of positive, the levels of positive cases that we are, we are having. But I'm very happy to report that so far, a lot of work is going on in that regard. We are still able to quarantine primary contacts we are still able to get to all of the positive cases within um, the, a 24 hour period so that there's no overlap. And I'm also happy to report that the Best Dos Santos lab is now in a position where we are current, there's, there are no um, samples or, or results pending, 
and we're able to get out the results to those persons who require results in a timely fashion. So at this point in time, we are able to manage, but I'm saying that we have a lot to do in order to get ourselves, get the numbers down, get the positivity rate down and the cumulative incident rate down. And that is exactly, I, I believe, why the Prime Minister will issue the remarks that she will shortly. Thank you. And thank you very much, Minister Bostic. We now go to the Prime Minister. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you very much, Minister Bostic, for bringing us and updating us on where we are. I've asked to speak to the nation today because I want to talk on a few things. And uh, Minister Bostic has clearly shown us that we're having some challenges. It is not at panic level, but we don't want it to get to panic level. And I certainly don't want to be able to see any more Barbadians fall victim and lose their lives or even be seriously affected by this awful dreaded disease and this worse variant called Delta. The reality is that we know how to be able to deal with it in the marathon. And on the last two occasions that I spoke to you, that is what we spoke about. That effectively, we need to have a program that allows us to boost vaccines because the evidence is clear that vaccines can assist in saving lives. We've equally, however, in doing so, cannot forget who we are as a people. And we have determined that it is not our way to be able to mandate persons, but to reason and to be able to have and put in place the things necessary to facilitate as many persons as possible. And why? Because I'm not prepared, this government is not prepared to sacrifice two to three generations of social stability by mandating and dividing this society in ways that many of us will not see it healed before we leave this earth. To that extent, however, I also believe as I've moved around with my ministers, with members of the social partners in the last two to three weeks, we have been engaging, as I said on the last occasion, with sectoral partners um, in the health sector. But in addition, we've been on the ground every day, four or five hours a day, meeting with people and talking to people. And we recognize that there are some very legitimate concerns, but there are also some legitimate constraints and then there are those who will, for religious reasons or medical reasons, not be able to do it. But where does that leave us, as we've said from the beginning? We need to have as many Barbadians take it as humanly possible. And those Barbadians are in different age groups now. As I've indicated, more than one in every two Bajan adults have already taken a vaccine and have shown their preference by taking that vaccine. We now know one in every five children, teenagers between the age of, or children I should say, between the ages of 12 and 18 as students have already taken it. But we need to boost these numbers urgently. And in order to boost these numbers, we need to expand the fight and to get more people on board. I want to use a simple theme that keeps coming to us as a government. Each one, reach one. Each one of us, reach one. If we have one in two Bajans already vaccinated, then each one must be prepared to help reach another one. And it is going to be that kind of conversation that we're going to have to have with each other. Within households, because the Delta variant is proven that it is most deadly and most dastardly, not in um, public places as much, but when people get home and when the mask comes off on an evening. In other instances where we're finding it in public places, <coughs> we also have to remind persons of the appropriate way in which to wear masks. Not as a necklace as I have it here, only because I'm talking to you. But once I leave talking to you, back covering over my nose and my chin. The bottom line is that these, along with the things of keeping your distance, social distance or physical distance, only means keeping your distance from people. And then washing and sanitizing your hands as regular as possible. But in order for us to get as many people on board, to save as many lives as we must save, not only do I need all of you to help the government, and I mean all of you, from the social partnership with whom I've just met, um, its, leader, its leaders before coming to talk to you. Similarly, 
all of the NGOs and church leadership in this country, all of the individual households in this country, all of the individual businesses in this country, all of the individual liming groups and sporting teams, all of you. Because why? We're going to have to slow down a little bit. I gave this country the assurance on Tuesday, we're not locking down. And the more I've gone on the ground, the more I know that we cannot lock down because the people who will be affected by it are simply too many. And the numbers may actually be far more than what we may even lose from COVID. But the bottom line is, is that COVID ultimately is our immediate threat. And it is against that background that sometimes, as I said, in a marathon, you may have to slow down, even if you don't lock down. And we need to slow down in order to boost vaccines. We have given this country the assurance that we will not mandate adults. But we equally have a system that has been in place for decades, even before I was born, with respect to the vaccination of children in schools. On the previous occasion that I spoke, I mentioned that we have a system that allows and requires all students, not allows, that requires all students to be vaccinated unless you have the exception that is triggered by one, religious persuasion, and two, medical condition. And the ministries of health and education deal with those in a seamless way. I want us as a country, please, to set the target that within the next five weeks, that to the middle of October, that we are capable of vaccinating as many of our students as possible. And why? Because those persons need to be able to get back into functional school. And there are so many parents who are already asking, but why can't we do it? We recognize that there are some schools and the Ministry of Education will set out the criteria that might meet this target quicker than others. And who do we need to help us meet this target? We need the PTAs, we need the teachers, we need the parents, we need the class groups. And the parents in the class group saying, our children want to go back to school, our children have been vaccinated, we want to get back there. And we need to do this with a target for the middle of October. We are currently using secondary schools to help us with um, tertiary isolation, but we expect that if we can boost our overall vaccine rate, and if we can do what I will talk to you shortly on, which is the introduction of a new framework for home quarantine and home isolation, then we will be able to get to that sense of new normalcy as fast as we can. But I'm here to tell you that while the government will do and continues to do all that it must do, this battle now has to also be fought in the nooks and crannies and in the homes of this country. The evidence is very, very clear that there are persons and families, large families as well, who are being affected because the Delta variant, we are told by the doctors, is as contagious as chicken pox. I don't need to tell you what I mean. You know and I know. And therefore, it means when your guards are down at home, the Delta is prancing up and literally taking out people. And hence why the Ministry of Health is now having family clusters that we've told you on the last two or three occasions that we have spoken to the country. In order for us to get there, we have to keep repeating the message over and over. I have told you I'm a Jimmy Cliff girl. We can get it if we really want, but we must try and try and try. We'll succeed at last. And we're telling the country, as a government and as a people, that we need as many people on board. Will we get all? No, we won't. But what we do need is the people who can take vaccines, taking it not just for yourself, but you see that age group between zero and 12, baby and 12, they can't have a vaccine yet. And while we expect to have a study soon available to us medically, as to what will be available for those five to 12 year olds, we do not yet have it. So who takes care of them? The country that I know is the country that protects the most vulnerable. And it therefore means that many of the adults who are saying now, man, I can take it, but I given it a little time, or we gonna wait, or I waiting to see if the Cuban one come, or I waiting to see which other one come. I hear you. But I also hear and see the evidence before our eyes every day as a government, that we are facing more and more younger people being affected by this virus. As we speak today, we have persons 31 and 33 with no comorbidities 
in the primary isolation unit at Harrison's Point. People who would otherwise be walking up and down this country and moving around and virulent and everything, taken down by the Delta variant. How many of you have seen the nurse Sophie, who was on television and social media, tell us what happened to her? She survived, but how? And what does she have to live with now in terms of her comorbidities that she has now? She never had them before, but she has them now. And she is liable to get it again like anybody who has had it before, you can get COVID again. So what is the simple message, my friends, that we need each of us to reach one? Each one reach one. And in primary school, we learn that two into two is one. And if we have one plus one, that is two. And if each one reaches one, instead of having one in every two adult Bajans, we can get as close to almost all. As I said, I know and accept there are some for religious reasons who will not take it. And there are some who for medical reasons cannot take it. But those of us who can, and those of us who can encourage others to do, as I have been doing not just in these national addresses, but along with my candidates, um, my, my MP, sorry, we've been doing on the ground, trying to reach as many people as possible. But we need now the effort to go broader. And that is why I said sincerely to the Democratic Labour Party and why I have to the leader of the opposition and his party invited them consistently on matters pertaining to COVID-19 to be part of the social partnership. As recent as the 30th of August, we say to you today, this battle is not simply on the highways and byways or business establishments or even churches in this country. This battle is also in the nook and nooks and crannies of this nation. Because of the numbers that we are now getting, the Ministry of Health officials have settled on a policy that is going to now have to be rolled out and for which there must be massive public education for Barbadians and that policy is related to home quarantine and home isolation. It will only be permitted for the extremely low risk persons, not medium risk, not high risk but those persons who predominantly are minimal risk to themselves and minimal risk to the country. And why? When persons are isolated, the purpose is first and foremost for us to give you medical help as soon as possible. The doctors do not tire in telling me that the earlier you are treated, the better. And that is why we say to persons, if you're having symptoms, do not delay because it is the difference between life and death or life and serious comorbidities. Once those persons come forward and they are taken care of, there's a point at which the disease then starts to trail back down and where they're not as contagious or not contagious at all. At the same point, we also recognize that persons who may have caught it because we know vaccinated persons can catch it, but they're unlikely to be as seriously compromised as others. Not impossible, but very unlikely. And we see it in the figures that the Ministry of Health is now giving to the country. And what are those figures? That on average, 81% of the persons in primary, secondary, and tertiary isolation are not vaccinated. Eight out of every 10 people going in are not vaccinated. But it gets worse because the majority of vaccinated persons do not reach primary or secondary. Indeed, I think we've had only two or three primary persons, prim vaccinated persons, reach primary. The message, my friends, is clear. What are our objectives? I repeat them again. I said it on the last time on which we spoke. One, we must seek to save lives. Two, we must seek to minimize serious hospitalization. Three, we must seek to contain wherever possible the spread of COVID by wearing up the mask, wearing the mask. The vaccine is an additional shield to that transmission by sanitizing and by keeping our distance from people wherever possible, including regrettably in our houses for now, especially if you are not vaccinated. If you're vaccinated, this is going to become endemic, just like chicken pox, just like dengue, just like um, the flu, a serious flu. And yes, do some people regrettably pass from this earth in the instance of dengue and chickenpox and serious flu? Yes, but minuscule numbers. 
and that until the world finds something that can better treat or better prevent COVID fully, absolutely, that is the world in which we are going to have to live. But while we do all of this, we still have all the same challenges that we had prior to January 2020. And we have more because people have lost their jobs and people are now themselves having to fight, having to draw down on savings, having to do a whole host of things because we don't live only around COVID. We still got to feed people. We still got to do all the other things. We still have other medical conditions that people are facing and suffering from. And you know that I know that only too well. And that is why we have to continue to maintain the level of medical services as far as is possible. But that too will be compromised if more Bajans don't choose to get vaccinated. I'm talking straight, straight. If we don't choose to step up to the plate and take it for those who can't take it or who will not take it for religious reasons or who can't take it because of age, because they're baby to 12 years old, we are going to fight these problems for much longer than we should, and the economic and other implications and social implications, regrettably, will be too much for us to bear. It is against that background, therefore, and not going for a lockdown, because I need people to keep working. The papers are talking about our numbers in business activity across the country. We understand the difficulties that people have, but we understand, too, that the jobs that have come back, we need to keep them ticking over and over. So where do we go from here? We go to be able to help us help you. And we will do that through increased communication, increased public information, increased focus grouping to see what you are saying. And the one thing I learned as I go around, more and more Bajans are relying purely on social media, as we know, to get their information. But from the very start of this thing, I've told us, and we've warned you as a government, that social media can be as enlightening as it can be also as misleading. Because the source of information is not always the one that you can rely on. That the, ev the, the, the clear evidence that has come forward from the international social media companies is that two-thirds of the information against vaccinations has come from no more than 12 people, 12 entities globally, 12 entities across 7.5 billion people on this earth have been responsible for two-thirds of the information. Now, when you a misinformation too, when you apply that information and your heart looks at that information. You have to ask yourself, what are we really going on here? And who am I listening to? And can I do like a man once asked a woman to do, to not believe her lying eyes? No. I have to look at the facts. I have to look at the facts as they are, not listen to the voices who want to tell me what to do. And the facts are that the majority of people who are going in to serious hospitalization by far, over 95% are persons who are not vaccinated. Not vaccinated. And I'm saying to you that when we look at that, then it is up to you to make those decisions for you and your family. And I ask you simply to remember that we need to take care of our children. At the same time, we've also taken a decision in the absence of having that independence voice before, that there will be a person appointed as a national COVID-19 public information advisor, along with an established PR firm who every day, all day, can work with the health comms team that is there, that is still doing other things, can work with public affairs and GIS, because we realize that we need now to expand significantly the conversation, but more importantly, in a shorter period of time. We will make the announcement as to who that person is when Cabinet finishes and when we settle the arrangements with that person. And as you know, I go back into Cabinet this evening and will settle the arrangements, I hope, with the person this weekend. Similarly, we also accept that those persons will also help us in the engagement with NGOs, with sporting groups, with almost every demographic in this country. Because as I said, let us use the next few weeks, the next month for our children, the next few weeks for adults. 
we will utilize whatever vaccines we have here. We still have enough vaccines for a good 75,000 people before the next set of vaccines come. So we got enough to start going. Leave it to me to find the problems. Leave it to Jeffrey to find the problem to solve with respect to the additional vaccines that must come in a few weeks' time. But I need you to help us reach the persons if we are going to avoid deaths and avoid serious hospitalization. I must tell you that I don't know of any harder duty than to receive those messages that come to me on a morning and throughout the day when a person is intubated or when we lose a person or about to lose a person. And I am therefore asking Bajans, help me, help the government, help yourself, help Barbados and get on board with this matter. In order to slow down a little bit, we're going to make a few adjustments. And those adjustments are literally not intended to stop people from being able to work and therefore you will see in what we've done how they will relate. They're not designed to stop commerce or to force anybody into a supermarket in a mad rush because you don't need to because it's not affecting supermarket times in any meaningful way. There therefore will be from Saturday night, the 11th of September, a curfew now will go, the curfew will go from 11 p.m. to 9 p.m. every night with the exception of Sundays. On Sundays, because we know sometimes we can go in and get an easy rest and play some cards or do watch a movie or read a book or talk with family, curfew will be at 6 p.m. And we're asking persons to adhere to those things. There is one exception. We recognize that restaurants are back into business and we're asking people to go for early suppers. The restaurants can stay and serve up until about 8.30 for those who live um, a half hour away or 15 minutes away. But we are given what is otherwise known an extended pass or a laissez passer to those restaurant workers so that they can get home um, and will have the additional time. They will be allowed to be on the road until 11 p.m. when the curfew finishes at 9 and until 8 p.m. when the curfew finishes at 6. It means um, on Sundays, and that will allow them to be able to clean up and to get home in good time without having to rush and put themselves at risk. And I would expect that the owners of those restaurants will assist there. Wherever possible, we're asking people to remember, don't gather, especially for the next two weeks. We're asking for fast food restaurants, however, and mer mercifully, from last year, the major fast food restaurants in this country, Chefet, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Burger King, Chicken Barn, those major fast food restaurants have either delivery or drive through. And we are therefore going to prohibit in dining in those fast food restaurants for the next two weeks, while at the same time continuing to ask you not to gather in shops or places inside where there is an outdoor option and also not not to um, overly expose yourself in crowds in any way. We met last week with the churches and we've already agreed to individual church plans so there is no change on that and we hope to be able to have plans for each church that is appropriate to the particular risk that they face. And, and I think that we had good meetings with the Barbados Christian Council and the Barbados Evangelical Council on that. We also spoke to the warehouses or those buildings where ventilation is poor, and we spoke with the private sector, and I know that the relevant officials in the government are in fact dealing with individual entities to be able to ensure that we can improve ventilation because, as I said before, this is not a sprint, this is a marathon. Given the fact that we want to slow down, we are asking now for us to hold on all contact and team sports for the next two weeks. And there may well have to be another two weeks if the vaccination numbers are not up for those um, contact and team sports and also no hiking. And we are asking for that because we believe that for now, slow down. We don't need to lock down if we can slow down and we can vaccinate. And that is absolutely, absolutely critical. I've already spoken to you about the proper mask wearing, but I've asked the Attorney General to please ensure that that is now explicit in the protocols that persons must wear the mask above their nose and below their chin. It is not coming with a penalty, 
but it is coming as a reminder to persons that this is nothing to play with, especially with the Delta variant. Similarly, my friends, we have also agreed that against that backdrop, since we are putting these measures in place in order to go into communities, uh, in order to boost vaccination, sorry, we will go into communities where people are and why. As I've explained to many persons, a mother with three children, two above 12, one below the age of 12. For her to carry the three children and herself, or the two children and herself, she can't leave the younger child at home alone. So first of all, she's moving with four. If she has to catch bus, she got to pay bus fare to go to town. You ever see a child going to town yet and don't want something? They want something to eat. They want something. They're therefore going to have to help satisfy the children with that. Whenever done, this exercise can cost a mother $60, $70 before she catch herself. It is against that backdrop that we have agreed, therefore, to carry community vaccine stations. And they started today with Deacon's Farm and Silver Hill being the two areas that the community vaccines have gone into. Similarly, tomorrow we go into the Pine Housing area and Haynesville. Saturday, we go into New Orleans in Bridgetown and Maynard's housing area in St. Peter. Sunday, we go to Bush Hall and we go to Orange Hill in St. Andrew and St. James. Then we go, and, and, and the list will go out um, on Monday, Carrington Village and Ellerton. And I can go on and on, but what we have agreed is that we must have community vaccine stations. The Minister of Health this morning also issued a directive to his officials that as a matter of policy, that the government of Barbados now will extend the opportunity to private doctors to help also in the vaccination campaign. And that is absolutely critical if we are to meet where we want to go so that this slowdown that we're doing in the next two weeks and possibly four weeks will be contextualized against how we can increase our vaccination rates and how we can minimize our hospitalization and minimize the number of deaths. We accept and have been meeting with BAMP such that those um, private doctors that will be brought on board, the government will pay them to be able to administer the vaccine so that they do not have to charge any citizen either for the vaccine or for the literal um, using and administering the vaccine on any patient. This is not meant to charge anyone and the government will stand in the bridge breach for all Barbadians with respect to vaccines. I also want to remind us that as we do these things, please, that contact tracing is taking place and we need to make sure that as many of you get tested as possible. Separate from the large site at the gymnasium, which now has two separate lines for those people traveling and then for those who just want to go, we are trying to expand and we have been having through um, Dr. Bayer and the mobile clinic, mobile testing clinics all over the island as pop-up clinics, but we're also seeking to do fix additional alternative sites for testing. As Minister Bostic already told you, we have gotten over the hump that we had last weekend, which happened for a few days with a backlog, and we are satisfied that we will continue to refine the process. But we also have additional labs, as the public already knows, both at the Crane as well as at Bayview Hospital that are helping us in this effort. As I said, white tests, the earlier you know you have symptoms or the earlier you're not feeling well or the earlier you have the virus, if you're asymptomatic and you've tested, the easier and quicker it is for you to recover. I am stuttering. I'm telling you the truth. Catch it early and you got a chance. And why am I saying all of these things, my people? Because at the end of the day, we do not want to lose any more people. I can wait until a lot more things happen and to get to panic mode. That's not who we are. We want to plan. And we want you to take in front before in front take you. And those who keep saying, we're going to wait and we're going to wait, time isn't waiting on you. Delta don't respect ages, Delta don't respect gender, Delta don't respect class, Delta don't respect nothing so. And therefore, if you are to protect yourself, then you can't wait and do it in somebody else's time or in your time. You need to do it as soon as possible. And I'm asking you, therefore, to help us reach, each one of us, reach one, to be able to do that. Against that backdrop as well, 
As I said, the curfew time, I'm being told to clarify, the curfew time will go from 11 p.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week, but on Sunday, it will go to 6 p.m. So to put it another way, there will be curfew in Barbados from 9 p.m. at night to 5 a.m. in the morning, on Monday to Saturday, and on Sunday nights from 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning. And that makes that absolutely clear for you. At the same time, we are also asking persons, please, please, to recognize that give the proper information when you're doing the contact tracing. And to make sure, Jeffrey has said, for the most part, the majority of people are helping. But I want everyone to help because we only need two or three not helping for this thing to get ahead of us. I repeat, the information on home isolation and home quarantine will be made to you and the criteria for it, which will require security guards or alternatively persons may say, I don't want a security guard. I prefer to have a, a monitoring bracelet as well as a CCTV camera, as well as the periodic check-in of the Ministry of Health persons. We get it. And with respect to persons who may not have appropriate status, nobody is asking for the status to go for the vaccine here. Go and get the vaccine. We have given to everybody, and we don't ask where you're born, how you're here, nothing like that. Take the vaccine, because the vaccine doesn't ask, the, the virus doesn't ask you where you're born or how you get here either. The virus just takes a host and uses you as a basis to go to somebody else. So I'm asking us, please, to focus on these things. My friends, Barbados is not alone in these issues. We have taken a lot of decisions that have reduced the number of deaths from what it might otherwise be. And the fact that we only have 52 deaths is 52 too many. But there are other countries across the world and across the region that are facing numbers in three and four digit deaths. I do not want us to get there. I swear to you, I do not want us to get there. And we need your help not to get there. We need your help in the homes and in the congranies because the government is not going into people's homes. We can't go into your home. Only you can do that. That's your right. And that's what you need to do. But you need to help us help you. And that is what this conversation today is about. And if I have to come again, I'm going to come again because I told you I'm a Jimmy Cliff girl. And I'm going to come and we're going to try and try and try until we get it to that point where we can live comfortably and where we're not risking death, even if we're risking the contraction of the virus. The virus will be with us for some time, but death does not have to be with us at all. And serious hospitalization does not have to be with us at all. The reality is that the evidence is showing that the Caribbean is red hot as we speak. And the reality also is, is that in being hot, what it means is that countries are under pressure. I have therefore asked the Chairman of CARICOM, Prime Minister of Antigua, the Honorable Gaston Brown, because I really do believe that if ever there was a time for an urgent heads meeting, it has to be in the next few days. And I've asked for that meeting. One, because we need to coordinate our resources internally, but we also need to have a démarche to our international partners to help this region at the very time when its needs are greatest. And secondly, so that we can also speak with one voice to our people in this region for whom the culture of vaccine hesitancy is rooted in the other aspects of our culture which we have come to enjoy and, 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 and to, to be happy with. But it is now having a backlash and therefore we have to be able to speak to our people to recognize that this thing is real, it is not plain and let us get on board and protect ourselves. The government can protect you only so far but it is up to each of every one of you, not just to protect yourself as an adult, but to protect those babies, the 12 year olds, that we cannot otherwise protect by any other mechanism. I hope, therefore, my friends, that we can do this journey together. And I ask you simply, let us get on board. Let us, each one, reach one. And if we can do so, then I'm comfortable that even though we must live with COVID, that like dengue, like chicken pox, like a serious flu, it will not cause our country, our people, our households to grind to a halt, to be locked down, or worse than that, to be lost from this earth. 
I believe we can do it. I ask you as soon as you can from today, each one reach one because that is how we're going to, in the words of Jeffrey, have no surrender and no retreat. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Prime Minister, the Honourable Mia Amor Motley, and the Minister of Health and Wellness, Lieutenant Colonel, the Honourable Jeffrey Bostick. That was an address to the nation. Good afternoon.